What's good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we've got a complete food tour of Chicago's Chinatown for you. We'll be hitting up some local favorites, some classic restaurants, everything under the sun for the people to eat and drink. But before we get started on our food journey, go ahead and finesse that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and be sure to check out my Patreon page for exclusive community and some bonus content. So I hope you're hungry, get those chopsticks out, and let's go on a food tour of Chinatown. Chinatown is one of the dopest neighborhoods in Chicago. Chicago and one of the best areas in the city to find incredible food and drink. No longer limited to just Chinese food, today you can find cuisine from Korea, Japan, and Vietnam. We spent a three-day weekend in the neighborhood so we could support as many local businesses as possible. On this food tour, we're hitting up nine of our favorite spots. Let us know in the comments your go-to restaurant in Chicago's Chinatown. Good morning from Chinatown. So the first stop on our food tour is Chu Quan Bakery. We made a nice morning run pick up some breakfast. It is the oldest Chinese bakery in the entire city of Chicago. We came here a couple of weeks ago for Lunar New Year and got a couple of mooncakes, but now we are back for even more Chinese baked goodness. And I am so hyped to show you guys what we picked up in this beautiful box, by the way. So we got three buns. We got a barbecue pork bao. It's nice and soft. Got a nice shiny top. Also, it's breakfast time, so we got a ham and egg bao red bean puff cake, a couple of lotus moon cakes, and we got a melon bao. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the ham and egg bao. Check that out. Nice and soft, I can see the ham and the egg in there. Mmm, wow, the bun is so soft. The best way I can describe this bao is that it's kinda chewy on the outside, but soft on the inside and the egg, it has a good flavor. Really great way to start the morning. And of course, y'all know I had to get my coffee, but the best part of all of this, the coffee, all the buns, the cakes, $10. And this coffee, I gotta say, for a $1 coffee, this is pretty legit. I always get asked, what are the best coffee spots in Chicago? Hey, this is a low key, undercover, $1 coffee spot. Yes, it's still possible to get a $1 coffee in the city. Barbecue pork bao. But this is classic. This is what they're really known for. Mm. Again, the bun is really soft, but it has a good chew to it. The filling inside, it's not a whole lot, which is nice because it is morning time and I'm not trying to really eat a whole bunch of meat. So the filling is really good. Take a bite of the lotus moon cake. Mm. I had these lotus moon cakes for Lunar New Year and just like before, excellent, good taste, kind of like a nutty type of bean flavor with a little bit of sweetness. The sugar is not overpowering in this which is what I like. You can eat all of these pastries and not kind of feel like you're gonna hit a sugar crash. Overall, I would say this was a very successful morning food run. I'm so excited for all the goodies we picked up at Chuquan Bakery. Let's go. Gonna start with the melon bun. Not actually sure what's in it, but it looks amazing. I don't think I've had anything like this before. I didn't even know what to expect, really. It's got this like layer of almost like a dried icing sugar on it. It's not too sweet. It's like really delicious. And there's this really, really soft bun on the bottom. Just a lovely morning pastry. Now we're gonna try the red bean puff. If you're used to red bean types of pastries, it's not too sweet, so that's what you would expect. It's very, very nice and flaky on the outside. Delicious, it reminds me of hopia, if you're Filipino. <laughs> we are in the underground food court in Chinatown. There are so many selections here from L.E.T., the Taste of Shanghai, the Shan Shan Taste, which is where we stop to get this Roja Mo. It's basically a cumin beef Chinese style hamburger, Xi'an style, Xi'an, Xi'an style. It smells really good and it's a really popular street food. This is a real pleasant surprise. I didn't know what to expect from a Chinese style hamburger sandwich, but it's really good. The bread kind of reminds me of almost like an English muffin. On the inside, you've got the meat and the cumin really comes through. Looks like you have some green onions or something like that inside there. This rojamo is so delicious. 
the bread is nice and light and fluffy, kind of like a pancake almost. And then you can taste the green onions in there and the cumin just pops. I would totally say that this food court is underrated in Chinatown, probably because it's kind of hidden. You gotta go underground to come get all the way here. No trip to Chinatown is complete without boba tea. So we stopped at L.E.T. and I got me a grapefruit green tea. Look at that grapefruit. Nice. It's beautiful. L.E.T. is Taiwanese style boba tea right here in the underground food court. It's been a minute since we've been here. I got lychee with mango and strawberry jelly. It looks incredible as you can see. Very colorful very refreshing. That's usually what you get out of these teas. Plus a little bit of kick of caffeine. I'm ready to try this. The lychee definitely powers through. I taste the grapefruit in that. So even though indoor dining in Chicago has been open for quite a while, it's actually at 50% capacity right now. Some restaurants are kind of still opting to be carry out only. MCCB is one of those such restaurants. If you remember last Lunar New Year 2020, we came down here, celebrated the parade, we went to various restaurants, MCCB was one of them. So we couldn't leave it out of a Chinatown food tour. It is a Michelin recommended restaurant. It is so incredible. So what we got here is some dry chili chicken, some soy shrimp, and choy sum. You know, we love that Chinese broccoli. Of course, they throw in the white rice on the side. And we ordered so much food, the portions are so humongous that they thought three people were eating. So that's why we've got uh, three sets of chopsticks here. But in any case, of course, you know, I gotta try a little bit of the rice, steamed rice. You can't really go wrong with that. It goes perfectly with the rest of the food. But I really wanna try the Meiji style jumbo shrimp first. It takes a little bit of extra work because you do need to peel. That brings that extra bonus flavors. Meiji style shrimp. That was a great piece of shrimp. Real meaty, chewy. That flavor of the soy sauce is coming through. We're gonna keep this food train rolling. Get some dry chili chicken. This is a classic. This is a favorite of mine and Larissa's. We're always getting this. You know what you're gonna get with a dry chili chicken. It's gonna be on the spicier side, that crisp and crunch. I don't recommend eating the peppers. I normally don't, but it, hey, if you want to, go for it. There's also garlic here, nice and spicy, but besides the spice, it's extremely flavorful. I definitely recommend this one. I am so excited to try this food right now because MCCB is one of my favorite places to get Chinese food. Here we are, the dry chili chicken. So this one is gonna be made out of the dark meat, which is more flavorful, it's got more fat in it. Obviously it just adds to like the kick of flavor when you're when you're biting into the spicy chicken. Super, super yummy. This is the Meiji style shrimp, full of soy sauce flavor. This is the choy sum. So it's gonna have the long stalks, so longer than like American broccoli. It tastes similar, but the leaves remind you of spinach. Super garlicky and healthy for you. Gotta balance out the rest of the meal that we have here. The next stop on our Chinatown food tour is Uni Uni, where you can pick up some delicious teas. Narissa went with the honey jasmine green tea hot, and I got me a strawberry orange jasmine green tea with crystal boba. It's looking pretty good. Haven't had my caffeine this afternoon, so. Mmm. Oh, that is good. The jasmine with the green tea and the fruit flavors mixing in. Wow. I'm about to get a jolt of this fruit tea from Uni Uni. We are kicking off day two of our Chinatown food tour with a morning stop at Tu Le Joux. Gotta get that morning coffee, so I got a double espresso. Tu Le Joux is a French Asian inspired bakery and don't let all the wrappings and the boxes that all the pastries are in confuse you because everything is baked daily. As a matter of fact, they recommend that you consume it day of or refrigerate it. So this is a fresh croissant. Mmm. Mmm. So just like you'd expect, nice and flaky, buttery. Goes perfect with an espresso. Hey, kind of feels like I'm in Paris right now. We've been here a few times and it always comes through. It's a nice little bakery right here in Chinatown Square. So cheers. Got my Honey Earl Grey Lemon Tea to kick off my morning. I also picked up a strawberry croissant. It looks like it's got a little bit of a cream filling. Check that out. Here we go. We love starting off our day with pastries like croissants because they're light, they're buttery, flaky. 
This specifically has some good balance with the sugar and strawberries. A Chinatown food tour would not be complete without a visit to QXY Dumplings. This is where you can get some authentic soup dumplings. Some say they are the best soup dumplings in the entire city of Chicago. So what we got here are some beef and onion dumplings steamed, a nice basket. We have some pork and leek fried dumplings, wood ear mushroom salad, very good. Definitely something to try. We got poor tea in this beautiful teapot. It's steeping a little bit. QXY has been here a long time. They also have a spin-off restaurant in the loop called Jiao. You may have seen that one on my TikTok channel. You got your vinegar, your soy sauce, and your chili oil, which you're gonna wanna mix together in here. Dip your dumplings. Maybe I'm already telling you what you know. Hey, what else can you say? Soup dumplings, amazing food. Let's get it started. QXY. There are a lot of great options here, including vegetarian options. This is the beef and onion, so I dip it in the sauce a little bit. Obviously get a lot of broth in this soup dumpling. I really like it steamed. I think that's my preferred way of dumpling, but you know, when you fry it, it brings another layer of the flavor out. A nice crispy starch on the outside, that leek flavor really complements the pork meat very well. And of course, the skins of these dumplings it's really the star of the show. They're all handmade, made fresh right there in the back. They make them to order so that everything comes out right when you order. It's, it's incredible. And of course, this wood ear mushroom salad. It's a great. So the wood ear mushroom salad has a hint of vinegar, a little bit of spice, so there's a kick to it. And it's got a great texture. It's kind of chewy, also kind of crunchy, which you may not expect from a mushroom dish like this, but it's definitely one of my favorites to get here. This one right here is gonna be simple but delicious. We stopped at Barbecue King House for a quick snack. This is called soy sauce chow mein. Super basic recipe, soy sauce and noodles. Got a little bit of onions in here and I see some carrots and bean sprouts. <laughs> Even though we got the noodles today, what they're really known for is dishes like their Peking duck, roasted pork, you get like a whole chicken, lots of family style meals. So you're gonna get really good value for what you're paying. I highly recommend this restaurant. You can't miss it. On our final day of filming in Chinatown, you know we had to stop one more time at the oldest Chinese bakery in the city, Chiu Kwan. We got the barbecue pork bun again, because that's what they're known for. So a little bit of fuel for this whole filming situation we got going on. Mm. Dai Bak, this is a Korean barbecue spot where they actually cook the food for you. In a lot of Korean barbecue spots, you have to cook the food yourself. I'm not really into all of that. They bring you lots of banchan, which is great. They got some soju, which is pretty much an essential when you're eating Korean barbecue. And of course, you've got the K-pop on the speakers and on the screens all around you. Some nicely animated menus. Daibak has some great food. This is like my fourth or fifth time coming here. It's always coming through in the clutch when I want that uh, Korean barbecue right here in Chinatown. I'm so excited to be here at Daibak. I love, love, love Korean barbecue. I'm gonna enjoy some banchan right now, waiting for them to cook our food, and oh, I can't wait. <laughs> If you enjoyed this food tour of Chinatown in Chicago, go ahead and finesse that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I would really appreciate it if you shared this video with your very best friend. Check out my Patreon page for exclusive community and some bonus content. Thank you so much for watching. We are out of here. Gonna go find some more food. See you next time. Peace and blessings.